We have spent several videos now working with the convolution operation defined by this equation right here. Um, this equation actually does have physical significance. Uh, we'll explore that more in future videos. Right now we're just trying to get used to working with these equations. When you have the convolution of two functions of t, how to set up the integral and how to evaluate that integral. We've done that several times now in the previous videos. The greatest value of the convolution operation um, in differential equations is from this relationship right here. We will prove this equation in a future video. But what this tells us is we have two Laplace transforms where this is the Laplace transform of f of t. This is the Laplace transform of g of t. If we multiply the two Laplace transforms together and take the inverse, it's not equal to f of t times g of t. It's equal to the convolution of f of t with g of t. So we're going to use this to solve different types of problems we want to find the inverse Laplace transform of a particular expression. Now, in previous videos in our series, we derived these basic equations for the sine, the hyperbolic sine, the cosine, the hyperbolic cosine, t raised to some power, and for the exponential here. So we're assuming that everyone is familiar with these basic equations here. So in this video, suppose we want to find the inverse Laplace transform, say of this expression. We have k divided by s times s squared plus k squared. We want to know what function is this the Laplace transform of. We can write this as a product we could say k over s times 1 over s squared plus k squared. But in this form, it's not very useful because we look at this and being familiar now with Laplace transforms, we realize this should be for some sort of trig function. If there's an s in the numerator, it's a cosine. If there's a k in the numerator, it's a sine. So we want to have the k over here and have the 1 here. Now, 1 over s, the function that corresponds to that is just 1. The Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over s. So this will equal 1. That's the corresponding function to the Laplace transform of 1 over s. Then we have to take the convolution for the function that this corresponds to, and that is the sine of kt. So what we have right now is the inverse Laplace transform of this expression equals this convolution. Now, remember from the previous videos, this also equals this. And it's important to be aware that we can write it either way, because when we go to set up now 
the integral expression for our convolution, one of these might give a simpler integral to evaluate. Let's take this one. We put this in integral form, following our formula like we did in the previous videos. That would be the integral. f of t inside the integral becomes f of x. Here we just have 1. So inside of the integral, this is just 1. g of t becomes g of t minus x. So this is 1 times, we can take the 1 out of there now, times the sine of k t minus x dx. And again, that's just following our basic formula. one is just one. The sine of kt is the sine of kt minus x. What's on the right hand side, g of t, inside the integral becomes g of t minus x. Now this one, now f of t is the sine of kt inside of the integral is just the sine of kx. And that's just 1 times 1 dx. x goes from 0 to t. So both of these are simple integrals, but this one gives us the simplest integral. If we had a more complicated problem, then it could be significant as to which order we write down the convolutions. If we can write it down either way, then we want to think which expression gives us the simplest integral to evaluate. Here we have two simple integrals. Uh, we're fortunate. Let's work with this one, the simplest one. So what we have then is that this equals this integral. So let's just write it out. And again, all of this now comes from our basic equation. Taking the inverse Laplace transform, when I'm multiplying two Laplace transform functions together, gives us the convolution of the respective functions, which equals that integral. This is just the basic definition of the convolution operation. So for our specific problem, what we have is this equals this integral. And this is, of course, is very simple. This would be 1 over k. integral the sine is minus the cosine, so we have minus 1 over k, the cosine of kx, and x goes from 0 to t. So this is equal to minus 1 over k times x is equal to t, so we have the cosine of kt minus x is 0, the cos, whoops, let's get this in better focus. Here we have x equals t, the cosine of kt, minus x is 0, 
the cosine of 0 is 1. Or this would be equal to then multiplying across equals 1 over k minus the cosine of kt multiplying the cross gives that expression. So the inverse Laplace transform of this is this. And again, it all hinges upon what we did earlier here. Writing this as the product of two Laplace transform functions, writing it in convolution form, taking the simplest integral and evaluating it to get our answer. Now, when we were setting the problem up, to go back a few steps here, remember we said that and actually it was this that we set up an integral form and evaluated it. When we had this in integral form, it was sine of k t minus x dx. x goes from 0 to x equals t. Well, if we evaluate this integral, it should give us the same answer. Let's just go ahead and do that real fast. Let, um, let's say u equals t minus x. So du equals minus dx, or dx equals minus du. So now this integral, when we put the substitutions in, becomes the sine of k times u. This is now u. And dx is minus du. Minus du. And this will have different limits now, but let's evaluate it first, then we'll worry about the limits afterwards. So, we have a k here, so that will be minus 1 over k, but there's already a minus 1 out here, so that will be 1 over k times the cosine of ku, but u is this, t minus x. Now we had to remember our limits. X goes from 0 to T. So we have this, and that will equal 1 over K times X is equal to T. That's the cosine of 0, which is 1, minus x is 0, that is the cosine of kt. And that's the same answer that we got before, which of course it should be. But the point is that when you get, well, two things we had to remember. When we're writing the Laplace transform of the product of two functions, we have to do it in a way that's meaningful we want to have it like this, not like this. Because we can't take the inverse Laplace transform of this. But we can do it for this function. 
So we have to remember that when we're breaking this down as a product of two of the POS transforms, then write it out in convolution form. And remember, it can go either way, and which one we want to work with is the one that gives us the simplest integral to evaluate. And again, we'll demonstrate that further um, in more um, videos. Reminder that the playlist for all the videos is at the website at digital dash university dot org.